Here we are asked to uh, calculate the shunt resistance uh, required to design uh, a 10 amp uh, ammeter. Now let's uh, start with uh, the meter movement itself. Uh, generally a meter movement is made from a permanent magnet in which we have coil of wire and some sort of a graduated scale, scale and a meter needle attached to the coil of wire. As we run a current through the coil, we make it into an electromagnet. The interaction of the flux from the electromagnet with the flux produced by the permanent magnet uh, produces deflection in the needle attached to the moving coil and it turns out that the deflection is proportional to the current that we have flowing through the coil and so we can use that to make a variety of meters including voltmeters, ammeters and ohmmeters if the circuit is appropriately designed. Now the symbol that we use for the meter movement itself looks like this where it, it's a circle it shows a, a graduated scale and the meters needle inside. Now if we um, have one of those it has certain characteristics and typically you'll find that the characteristics are the current which will cause full scale deflection of the meter's needle, which in this case is 10 milliamps, and the resistance of the coil of wire that's used in it, in this case 10 ohms. So that gives us the full scale deflection of the uh, meter and the resistance of the meter. Now, our circuit becomes this. Uh, meter movement uh, in parallel with a shunt resistor if we are designing an ammeter. And the meter, remember, 10 milliamps and 10 ohms are its characteristics. We have a shunt resistor down here. Now, what we are asked to do is designed this so that the current that flows into the meter is a maximum of 10 amps. Well, we can only allow 10 milliamps to go through the meter movement or any more current than that. And the idea is that it can be damaged. So we base our um, design on the fact that the shunt resistor must take the rest of the current. So if we write Kirchhoff's current law at the node here, what we're saying is that the current in, which is 10 amps, is equal to the sum of the currents that leave or I shunt plus the full scale deflection current of the meter which is 10 milliamps. So we can calculate I shunt equals 10 amps subtract 10 milliamps. Now that gives us then 10 amps subtract 0 0.01 amps or 9.99 amps. So if we have 10 amps in 10 milliamps through the movement the rest of the current 9.99 amps will have to go through the shunt resistor. Now if we know the voltage drop across the shunt resistor Using Ohm's law, we can determine the required value. Well, the voltage drop across the 
meter movement is given by these two values. And because the movement and the shunt resistor are in parallel, they have the same voltage drop. So that tells us that the voltage drop across the shunt resistor by Ohm's law will be equal to the full scale deflection current multiplied by the resistance of the movement. And we have our 0 0.01 amps, um, 0 0.01 amps or 10 milliamps multiplied by 10 ohms. That gives us 0 0.1 volts across the shunt resistor. And so using those two values, Ohm's law says that the shunt resistor will be equal to the voltage of the shunt divided by the current through the shunt. And we have 0 0.1 volts divided by 9.99 amps. And that will give us a resistance of 0 0.01001 ohms. Now, if we move our decimal point three spots to there, we have 10.01 milliohms as the required shunt resistance.